Hello everyone. So I'm Ankita Tiwari and I'm from Department of Commerce. And today we are going to learn about planning and its process. So as we all know, planning is the first step and first primary function of management. So it's very important to understand what does planning means. So in real life, like everyone have come across this word planning in like everyday basis, whether it's uh, in kitchen preparing some biryanis or whether throwing a party in a, a with our friends. So everywhere planning is very much needed. So how it is needed in our organization, let's just jump on it and let's see what does planning means. So planning means nothing but thinking for our future or thinking in advance what we have to do, how we are going to do it and who all are going to do it. Everything deciding for the future is all about planning. This is what we used to say thinking before doing. So how planning is done in an organization, it's very important. It's not just getting up and just, okay, this is our objective and this is what we are going to do. No, we have to write it down or list it out, all the features, all the things, whatever we are going to do to achieve our objective in detail. This is what planning is. So the very first step is called as setting up of objectives. So what is setting up of objectives? So we will understand this concept with the help of a small example. So let's call out a girl called Ria. So Ria is a girl who is like very much popular in her friend group and she was turning to be 18 in next week. She decided to throw a party to her friends. Now here she wants to throw a party. She wants to, she won't just get up and say like, okay, let's go for a party, you know. So of course she wants, she has to plan everything according to it. So what she will do, she will find out like, okay, what I'm going to wear in my party, who all are going to attend my party, where I have to throw it, what will be the menu, what will be the venue, everything she will be deciding over like, okay, this is how I am going to do my party for the next week. So she will of course list it out, write it down, everything in detail. This is what planning in daily life it is. So first step is called setting up of objective. If we will continue the previous example, throwing a party or doing a party was the primary objective for RIA. Similarly for organizations, it can be anything like increasing sales by 25% or increasing profit of your by 20% or decreasing our extra additional costs, it can be anything. So fixing up of set uh, objectives for our organization or fixing up of a goal for organization is the first step in planning. So it should be very clear like what we have to achieve for the near future. Second step is called developing premises. Now what is developing premises? So assumptions made for the future, which uh, like for the future, whatever assumptions we are making regarding uh, attending the objectives of our organization, this is somehow developing of premises. For example, if we will continue our previous example, like uh, Ria is going to throw a party. Now she might uh, make some assumptions, okay, maybe I have a guest of 10 to 15 or what can be the budget of my uh, party, it can be like 3,000 to 5,000. So whatever she, the assumption she is making, it is called as developing of premises. In case of our organizations, we can say like if I wanted to uh, increase my sales, what can be uh, the premises? Here we can say like, okay, uh, decrease or increase in the government uh, taxations, pricing policies or the demand or sales forecast for the future. These are all the assumptions made for these all things are called as developing premises. Next third step is called as identifying alternative courses of actions. So what is identifying alternative courses of action? Alternative courses of action is nothing but like finding out different options. So for a particular ob achieving a particular objective how many alternatives or how many options we can have so of course we have multiple options over here similarly if we will continue our previous example like Ria she wants to give party like where she can give party maybe she can take her friends to KFC Domino's Pizza Hut it can be anywhere isn't it so these are different options or different alternatives for her to throw a party 
Now, if we will go ahead with our organization, if our organization's goal is to increase the sales by 25%, so, uh, so what can be different alternatives for it? That can be increasing of advertisements, making people more aware, increasing uh, offers like sales promotion techniques can be used, for example, giving buy one get one offers or 20% discount or whatever it is. So it can be like the various alternatives can be uh, identified to increase our sales. This is what identifying alternative courses of action means. So next step is evaluating courses of action. Now what is evaluating courses of action? Now we got an idea, okay, I have this option, I have that option, I have multiple options over here. Now how can I choose one? So evaluating all of them like, okay, if we will continue again the previous example, if she wants to choose KFC, then what are the merits and demerits of it? That means what are the advantages she can have? What are the disadvantages she can have? So listing out all the pros and cons of each and every alternative is called evaluation of particular alternative. So in case of uh, our organizations also, they used to write all the advantages and disadvantages of all particular uh, alternatives so all alternatives uh, are being like evaluated properly all the advantages and disadvantages are listed below then they used to find out okay which one is very much beneficial for us so listing out all the advantages and merits demerits are called evaluation co of courses of actions now selecting an alternative what is selecting an alternative after finding out okay this can be uh, advantages for particular thing this can be disadvantages for particular thing after like writing out all the merits and demerits, Rhea found out like, okay, KFC is the best place. I can go for KFC. I can get like uh, offers over there. It is very much convenient for me, like for every, me as well as for everyone whosoever is coming. It's on main town. So it will be very much uh, convenient for everyone to reach out there as ca in case of venue. In case of price, it comes under my budget. So it will be cost efficient as well. So similarly, organizations also select an alternative based on uh, all the merits they are having, whatever suits them the best, whatever alternative suits them the best according to their achievement of obje uh, organization's objective. So they will select one alternative. Sixth one is called implementing the plan. Now, it's a waste if we won't uh, turn those plans into action. So this step is called uh, turning the plans into action. We will just implement our plan. Whatever we have wrote till now, it was all theoretical. Now we will implement those plans in a particular or practical way. So if we will continue that, like Rhea will throw a party, she will go for the uh, enjoyment, she will call her friends, she will inform everyone, okay, hey, I'm going to throw my party on this date, on that time, at this venue. Everyone, please be present over there. So informing all the subordinates, all the employees of the organizations about the particular plan, whatever we made in our organization is called implementation of the plan. We are going to implement uh, all those things, whatever we have planned into action. And last step is called follow up action. We can't just let them go like, okay, we have made a plan, we have implemented, let them be whatever they are doing. No, we can't do that. We have to make follow up or we have to take feedback. Are you doing your work properly or not? You are following the steps correctly, yes or no? So everything should be followed up properly. So these are uh, seven different steps of planning. And so these are different seven steps of planning. And these can be easily memorized by the help of a small mnemonic called as S dies if. So this is one of the easiest way to remember these seven steps because process everyone knows like we can't step any of the process. We can't just skip out any process or any step for the uh, following question. So if we are skipping a step or skipping of a n number, it will be deducting our number. So it's better to remember it with the help of m m mnemonics called as S dies if. If you can see S D I E S I F S dies F. It's easy to remember now. Everyone can remember this mnemonic, and easily you can get like okay, these are the seven different steps of our planning process. Thank you, everyone. Ulla kattaramana kalluri, ungal lori. Devanayamal College for Women.
அட்டானமஸ் விழிப்புரம் உங்கள் எதிர்காலம் உங்கள் கையில்